What's up everyone, Coach KG here. Today I'm gonna to be walking you through seven nutrition tips I wish I knew back when I started my fitness journey for easier and faster fat loss. Let's jump into it. So first off, it's that learning is going to be the key to long-term success. I know a lot of people want a quick fix or they want something just fully created where they don't have to think about it. I've been there, I used to follow a bodybuilder's diet plan. I would just follow Steve Cook's bodybuilding program uh, for nutrition and it just, it gets you results for a little bit, but long-term you don't see success because you haven't learned a lot. So my biggest takeaway here is to spend time being curious. Use my fitness pal for a certain amount of time so you can understand what each food is made up of. And it makes such a big difference because when you go out to eat, when you are traveling, when you're skating the grocery store and you've got a quick couple minutes and you have to find something that's great in carbs or a healthy complex carb or a, you know, a great source of protein, like you're able to navigate instead of just like, aimlessly wandering and that's where unfortunately a lot of people struggle you'll save a lot of time but past that it's more of the long-term approach where you start to understand how to navigate trickier situations as there will always be a lot of tricky situations number two data of all sorts is absolutely key and this is why i do recommend my fitness pal or whatever app it is that you're going to use to keep track for a certain amount of time because you can definitely get to your goal without data it's just gonna make it so much harder. And I personally am such a huge fan of it. So for all of our clients, we actually use a custom spreadsheet. And even right now with our 30 day challenge going on, basically it's 30 days within a 60 day challenge. We're on the second part here. We have lots of different criteria that we're aiming for. So you can see on the spreadsheet, there's lots of different goals with steps, you know, we always have water type goals, um, you know, nutritional goals, of course, as you can see, and there's just a lot of different feedback and there's different things to work towards. And when you know what's going on and when you know where your weaknesses are and then also your strengths, you can either lean into the strengths and then you can also try to get rid of those weaknesses, which is just gonna make an amazing pair in itself. Once you get into the rhythm, it makes it so much easier. And a lot of people don't realize these aren't things you need to do for the rest of your life. Once you get a flow, once you create the habit, once you learn kind of working off of number one, things just become automatic. You know, you wake up and you just start, it's, it's just a habit. Number three is the importance of protein. I know a lot of people miss out on this. Some people are worried about getting too bulky, you know, maybe some myths around kidneys, whatever it is. They miss out on a lot of years of results because they're focused on the wrong things. You know, they're crushing in the gym and they're just not filling themselves up properly with enough protein. And I typically do like to aim for about one gram per pound that you weigh. You can go towards the one gram per pound of your goal weight. So if you're 180 pounds and your goal is to be 160, you can aim for 160 and still see some great results. But I do look at protein as a shield against muscle loss, especially if you're someone who's trying to shred, you're trying to lose weight. If you just start decreasing your protein right away, because that's probably what's gonna be easiest and you obviously probably enjoy carbs and fats, you're just gonna lose muscle a lot faster. And then if you're also trying to gain muscle, it's gonna be a lot harder and it's just gonna be a lot slower uh, of a process. And one fun fact is even those who aren't lifting weights have actually shown to be able to increase their muscle mass while holding less body fat just from having a higher protein diet. When it comes to protein, it's gonna help you feel more satiated and it's just gonna also keep you full throughout the day, which has so many incredible benefits on top of the muscle building benefits. And you'll wanna typically aim to spread it out between two and four meals per day. If that works, obviously there's no right strategy, but it is definitely better to spread it out if possible. Before I jump into the next tip, I've actually been coaching exclusively online for almost 10 years now, almost 4,500 transformations, we're just about there. And I see a lot of people come into our program struggling, not knowing what to do, not knowing what advice is best, and just not having an actual game plan as well as accountability. If you want guaranteed results, I will be there for you every step of the way. First link down below, no strings attached, just fill that out, I'll get back to you as soon as possible. But it's time that you stop struggling, it's time that you start feeling your best, more confidence, more energy, and I can't wait to help you into the next tip. Number four, eat like a farm animal. I thought this was powerful, I came across it recently, it stuck with me, and I've been saying for years, just to simply put, eat as healthy as you can, eat whole foods, minimally processed, low ingredients, and it will change the game for you. Obviously, there are a ton of challenges with that, with society these days, and just, you know, everywhere you go, there's just, it's something, you know, screaming out at you, a big McDonald's sign, whatever the case is, but I can promise you, if you're trying to be a healthier version of yourself, lose body fat and do whatever it is that you're striving for, this will change the game. And it doesn't even have to be all the time, but if you can aim to have most of your diet made up of these amazing veggies, 
uh, lean meats or even fattier meats if you can incorporate that into your calories, fruits, uh, brown rice, grains, anything like that, just things that aren't filled with garbage, you'll feel better and you'll notice so many differences. And I want you to compare something. Let's imagine you have a bagel filled with tons of butter that you order at your local bagel shop. Have that, see how you feel afterwards. You'll be craving more unhealthy food, you won't be satisfied, you won't be full, versus having a nice hearty salad with some amazing chicken in there and maybe a couple other things you toss in there. You'll be having less calories, you'll be way more full, and it'll be way better for you. So I want to encourage you, this is something that can change the game. And next up, working off of that, this is the 80-20 rule. So this is something I learned the hard way. I started my fitness journey not realizing I could have fun foods and still see progress. I used to be really embarrassed. I remember back when I did a physique show years ago and I walked around and I had an ice cream cone. I would actually be worried about people around me who would see me having that ice cream cone because they would think, aren't you that fitness guy? Didn't you just compete? Like, aren't you, you know, this uh, you know, big, you know, why are you eating so unhealthy? And then I learned, unfortunately, that you can still see great results while having fun foods. But I had to spend many years of kind of having all these struggles of trying to be perfect, of trying to hide things. And in reality, that's just not the way to approach it. And so many studies have come out since then about flexible dieting, the importance of it, uh, about longevity, the sustainability effect. And I could make an entire video on this right now, but I promise you, if you follow number four that I just mentioned, eating like a farm animal, but also still allow yourself to have a bit of flexibility, you know, whether it's some sort of dessert or whatever it is, and it fits within your calories, you'll be way better off in the long run. It may get you there slightly slower, depending on your calorie range and what you've set for yourself, but I promise you, it will change the game for you. You don't have to go out and enjoy fun foods and just have it because there's flexibility in your day and just, you know, you're gonna say, I'm gonna have a cookie just because, but if you're craving it, instead of putting it off till the weekend, instead of saying, I can't have it, and then potentially binging, it's just a much better strategy to use 10 to 20% of your calories on something you're really looking forward to, and then moving on. Number six, these are things that I wish I knew myself, and I see a lot of people struggling with that I wish they knew as well. You can't out-exercise a bad diet. So many people just think if they go out and they run a ton, they bike a ton, do whatever it is, especially cardio, I find this is a common mistake, uh, that they're gonna you know, be able to combat that really bad night of eating or those consistent horrible eating patterns that are taking place day after day after day. You can't out exercise a bad diet, I promise you. You're just gonna be spinning your wheels for years, so don't try to do it. Lastly, a final note, I just wanna say it will take longer than you think. Be consistent, consistently show up. I will never film a video and not talk about this because it's very underrated. Too many people trying to preach how quickly you can get it done and you know, six weeks you can get shredded abs or whatever it is, obviously that's marketing, but if you consistently show up, become better, fill your day with amazing habits. You know, there's just, there's no rush, right? Obviously, if you have a special event, there might be, but I just wanted to leave you with that, especially because I know a lot of people struggle with this. There could be some speed bumps. There's gonna be some things that slow you down slightly, and that's a whole part of the process. You learn a lot, you learn how to navigate. So going forward, you don't have to go over that speed bump, and it's something that so many people miss out on. When you allow yourself to celebrate those wins, give yourself a bit longer time than you need, as well as paying attention to those non-scale videos, victories, it's gonna make such a big difference instead of just paying attention to the scale, which is obviously an amazing metric as well. You're gonna be able to show up and just not do it for a short amount of time, but also create a lifestyle and be able to succeed for the rest of your life. And that's what this is all about. So these are things that I wish I knew earlier on. I spent a little bit of time and sometimes a lot of time, depending on which one of these uh, tips I'm talking about here, just not feeling my best and just like wasting a lot of time. And my goal is to speed up the process for every single one of you watching. If you are willing and ready to put in the work to get to the next level, you want a fully done for you program that's gonna teach you something as well. It's not just gonna tell you, hey, go off and do this, but you're actually gonna be able to learn along the way. So one year from now, you're gonna be able to see how much you've learned, all the amazing habits, and you're gonna be able to succeed no matter what because of everything you learn. Then just fill out down below, there's no strings attached, first link, uh, my coaching program. I've helped over 4,000 people now fully online transform and I want you to be next, but thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.